My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church remembers the bishop and doctor, St. Peter Damien, who was also a Benedictine monk and one of the most influential reformers of the Middle Ages. St. Peter Damien uh, left behind quite a number of works and his influence uh, with the Pope was appreciated and he was uh, appointed to be the papal legate for a number of missions. There's one work of his which until recently Um, has remained quite obscure in our day, but uh, has recently begun to receive some popular attention. And that that is his book of Gomorrah, a work addressing the problem of clerical homosexuality and pederasty within the hierarchy of the church. In our day and age, this again has become a great scourge on the church, this same sin and scandal. And yet, we live in an age of political correctness, in an age of relativism, where the sin is not uh, confronted directly and courageously um, as it ought. And as a result, we see the great devastation that has taken place around the globe in the church, uh, entire dioceses have been brought to the brink of, uh, or not even to the brink of, but to bankruptcy, and the faith of many has been greatly damaged, if not lost, due to the prevalence of this sin and this, and the lack of courage, really, that uh, not only allowed the sin to uh, fester, but to Uh, spread and go unaddressed. And so even today, the scandal was quickly dubbed a pedophilia scandal by the popular press. And unfortunately, by many in the church, that same language and rhetoric has been taken up. And that isn't to say that there are no cases of pedophilia or to diminish the tragedy of those cases that do exist, but the number of what is truly and clinically pedophilia is very minor in comparison to the great number of cases which are more properly um, called pederasty, which is the uh, sexual abuse of adolescent males by adult homosexuals. And unfortunately, in our day, this has become a widespread abuse within the clergy. And in the time of St. Peter Damien, it also was a great problem. And St. Peter Damien then was Uh, one of the saints, really he's the only uh, bishop, cardinal, doctor and father of the church, it seems, to have addressed this problem with a treatise of its own, the Liber Gomorianus, referring to uh, that city destroyed by God in the book of Genesis, Sodom and Gomorrah, where these sins were also prevalent. And so 
St. Peter Damien addresses the problem, taking, uh, giving it the title of the book on Gomorrah. And St. Peter Damien then was courageous. In his day, it was perhaps politically incorrect to speak of such things. There is a certain kind of protectionism within groups where a brother should not speak against a brother. And for many things, this may be uh, acceptable or at least not quite as uh, damaging. But in the case of, of uh, a homosexual clique and, and a culture of sin that becomes insinuated within the hierarchy of the church, within the clergy, is certainly not something that for a false sense of mercy one can uh, simply not deal with. And in our day, this sin is not only tolerated for shame, but actually celebrated. And the world is trying to promote it as a positive value, something that society should embrace and should smile upon. And yet, the moral law and nature have not changed and will not change because God created this world with an order to it. So St. Peter Damien then, among his many works, addresses this problem head-on in no uncertain terms, in very strong language, and with a spirit of charity. And that is something that those who would uh, be apologists for the homosexual culture will claim that if you uh, speak against that lifestyle, then you are in some way hating. One of their, uh, the popular slogans today is no hate, and uh, therefore you can't speak of homosexuality as a sin. And this is anything but love or charity, that attitude that would uh, coddle someone in their error and not correct. According to St. Peter Damien, then, this sin, which is also known as sodomy, is one of the gravest of sins. In fact, the gravest. And for the term sodomy, he applies that broadly to include all acts against nature that would want to satisfy sexual pleasure by separating it from procreation. So not limited only to homosexual acts, but to a whole gamut of behaviors which in our day and age, unfortunately, are extremely prevalent. The separation of sexual pleasure from procreation is almost a global uh, practice today with contraception. That's exactly the point of contraception is to uh, allow sexual pleasure without the cutting it off from procreation and life. And of it, of this sin, St. Peter Damien said, if this absolutely ignominious and abominable vice is not immediately stopped with an iron fist, the sword of divine wrath will fall upon us, bringing ruin to many. Brothers and sisters, these words written a thousand years ago, almost, are as true today as they were then. And we see it a prophecy fulfilled in so many places in our church. Uh, for years, for decades now, the church has been faced with a vocations crisis. And there are many wise men within the church 
who recognize rightly that this crisis is the fruit of contraception. This is the ruin that is brought upon us when we go against God's order. And then, not only is there the problem of contraception, to which uh, many within the church are contributing, and of course, that applies primarily to those not in the clergy, but then there is this problem within the clergy, which has been unfortunately not dealt with courageously. It's beginning to be uh, addressed as a problem, but again, uh, the whole tendency to, to address the issue as a problem of pedophilia is uh, a red herring. It's, a, it's misdirecting attention from the real problem, which is the vice of sodomy. An author who has been writing on this subject for a number of years and had uh, published regarding St. Peter Damien's work, the Book of Gomorrah, um, some years before it was recently translated um, into the popular languages of Italian first and then in English, pointed out that none of the recent popes in their comments about St. Peter Damien even mentioned that he wrote such a book, which is a sign of uh, an unwillingness to confront the issue head on. That St. Peter Damien dealt with this problem in the uh, 11th century and addressed his work to the Pope at the time and intended for the book to be distributed among the entire clergy, particularly the bishops, who have a grave responsibility to address the problem and root it out, shows that the problem of pederasty within the church is nothing new. And yet, it's still a problem, a scandal, as it was then, and must be dealt with for the same reason why the church exists. That is the salvation of souls. That was St. Peter Damien's primary concern and should be ours today. In fact, that is the supreme law of the church, the salvation of souls. And false mercy is deadly if it allows a sin to be mistaken for a virtue or simply something harmless. When a surgeon finds a patient with a limb that's infected, if he should balk from taking appropriate measures in the treatment of that infected limb, he very well could lose not only the limb, but also the patient. Certain diseases, certain problems require decisive action, even though that action may be unpleasant and painful. It quite often, and in this case, certainly is necessary in order to save not only the member, but the entire body. And it's the supreme law of the church, the salvation of souls that should motivate us uh, in view of such damage that's been done in our day. So many victims of clerical abuse, so many souls damaged or lost among the clergy also, and so many faithful who've been hurt and who maybe have left the church, all of these people suffering from this sin and from this problem, uh, injustice deserve that it be addressed head on. 
And as I say, the church is beginning, at least in some aspects, to show a proper concern. The uh, Congregation for Catholic Education, which is now responsible for the formation of seminarians and religious, has stated in recent times, both under the pontificate of uh, Pope John Paul II, I think, Pope Benedict XVI, and again affirmed by Pope Francis that the vice of homosexuality, a deep-seated tendency to same-sex attraction, is a problem that disqualifies a man from the priesthood or religious life for quite obvious reasons. No one is interested in condemning persons and we should have compassion from those, for those who suffer from the affliction of same-sex sex attraction, but in no way should we admit uh, arguments that would be apologetic and cast homosexuality as a good to be embraced. And we have heard these preposterous arguments put forth even in the last synod it was rejected, but still it was spoken. And so this error is circulating still at high levels. And so we need to turn to the wisdom of the saints, the truth of the gospel and its scripture, history, and implore St. Peter Damien once again to visit the church with this truth so that it can be properly identified the sin of pederasty, homosexuality within the clergy and denounced and rooted out for the good of souls, both of the clergy afflicted and of the faithful. May the Blessed Virgin Mary Queen of Prophets, obtain the grace of courage for the hierarchy to deal with this problem. Praise be Jesus and Mary.